Hey, I'm coming to you from the patio of the house I've been living in, in Bainbridge Island. And watch this. From my patio, I can just reach up and grab a blackberry to eat. Mmm, delicious. All right. Let's talk about the World Wide Web, that www that shows up at the beginning of every web address that you type. We're going to look at the World Wide Web the way we look at everything in this class from three perspectives. Technology perspective, a social perspective, and an information perspective. From a technology perspective, the web is simply browsers and servers. Now let's back up for a minute. Remember I told you about the internet. The internet is a network. A network is a way that computers talk to each other. That internet is the, is the network that's attached to pretty much every computer you see these days. It's all connected to every other computer by the network. Now just because two computers are connected to each other doesn't mean anything's going to happen. There has to be software running on each of those two connected computers that allows those computers to communicate, that allows them to pass information back and forth. The World Wide Web is that thing. The World Wide Web consists of some computers that are sending information and some computers that are consuming information, right? The ones that are sending information are called servers. The ones that are communicate that are that are the ones that are sending information are called servers. The ones that are consuming information are called browsers. The servers are programs that run on computers to serve information through the internet to other computers. Okay, a server serves information and then on the other side, on your computer, on most of the computers that you work with, are browsers and those browsers consume information. They also send requests to the server to say, hey, give me this information or give me this information or I want to, you know, talk to a different computer. And all of that is what the internet, can, uh, what the World Wide Web consists of servers that are producing information and browsers that are consuming information. The servers run on, the, on computers that are owned by people who want to be on the web and the browsers are owned by people who want to consume information from the web. You can have a computer, by the way, and this one right here has a browser and a server on it. When I want to be a server, I'm a server. When I want to be a browser, I'm a browser. The browser as well is software that runs on a computer. Software running on one computer, communicating with software running on another computer through the internet. Okay, the internet is the network. The World Wide Web is the application that runs on that network consisting of servers and browsers. All right, that's the World Wide Web from a technology standpoint. Let's look at the World Wide Web from a social standpoint now. So I'll introduce you to a kind of philosophy that I use commonly in this class, and that's to say that if you want to understand a new technology, look at it in terms of the things that human beings have been doing since time began. Because we're doing the same things we've been doing since time began, we'll be doing them until time ends. That's just kind of how we are. We're people. And we use these different technologies to do things that we've always wanted to do. What do, have we always wanted to do that we use the World Wide Web to do? The answer, I think, is pretty clear. It's communicate. Human beings have always communicated. They've always going to communicate. Right now, the hot new thing to communicate is the World Wide Web. Right? That's a big deal. We can, we can do a lot of communication on there. Um, before, it was other media. After, it'll be other media still. So the World Wide Web is a communication media. If you want to understand communication, if you want to understand the World Wide Web, think about communication. What's communication? Well, some people are talking, some people are listening. There may be people responding. The same people who talk may respond. They, they may talk and then listen, right? All those, that's how we communicate. Very simple. And in all cases, I want you to use that simple understanding or gain a simple understanding and then use that simple understanding to pull very complicated things apart, like Facebook. Let's pull Facebook apart using those simple concepts. People speaking, people listening, and people replying or responding, right? Can you see already where I'm going with this? Look at a Facebook page. On the Facebook page, you can type in something about yourself. That's you speaking. You can reply to somebody else. That's you um, replying. You can simply read things that other people read and or wrote and then or, or uploaded. And you're a listener. So those are the three things you do. You're either listening, speaking, or replying to somebody else's speech. Right? And we've already, and you can see how, how quickly we could use that to understand what's going on, on the Facebook page. We can look at all the different areas and say, okay, this is a speaking area, this is a responding area, this is a, this is a listening place. Maybe, and we could maybe even suggest enhancements to Facebook based on that idea. How often do you want to speak? How often do you want to listen? Um, how, what, are the current, what are the common patterns of speaking and listening? Should we facilitate those inside of Facebook? So we have this idea of speaking, listening, and, um, and replying as a way of understanding what's going on on the web. And we'll look at lots of different technologies and you use that same method over and over again to understand those technologies. Okay, that's A. B, we've got to talk a little bit about why do we communicate at all? What's the purpose? Why, when you look at a website or when you look at a... Um, uh, an inner, any other kind of you know application that you look at that you that you can look at, 
uh, what, what's it trying to do? What are, the, what are the different things that it might be trying to elicit in you? Okay, so I have, again, a very simple model that I'll present to you that'll give you a way of thinking about it. When we communicate, either interpersonally or broadcast by, you know, talking to a lot of people or through Facebook or whatever, we have, generally speaking, four things in mind. We might want to educate somebody. We might want them to get, get them to understand something they don't already understand. We may just simply want to entertain them. And I don't need to tell you how much of the internet is right around that one, right? It's right around entertainment. This part of the internet that you happen to be on right now consuming this video is all about understanding, right? I want you to know something you didn't know before and so I'm trying my hardest to get you to understand. I'm not particularly getting you, trying to entertain you, but I do try to put a little bit of entertainment in there just to, to make it more interesting, right? So all understanding and no entertainment isn't so interesting. All entertainment and no understanding is, uh, has its own problems. <laughs> okay, so understanding and entertaining it may want you, it may get you, want, it, it may, the communication may be trying to get you to feel something. It may be trying to get you, to give you an emotional response, to, to, to give you some sense of awe or some sense of wonder or something like that. Something that's, that's deeply emotional or, and this is certainly the case in most commerce sites, and if you're, and if you're smart, you'll look for this in every single site that you go to. What's it trying to get me to do? When we consume communication, sometimes it causes us to act. It causes us to do something we wouldn't have otherwise done, like buy something, for example. So this is our way of understanding the World Wide Web from a social perspective. It's all about communication, speaking, listening, and responding. And the communication that goes on on the World Wide Web is all around the four big purposes of any communication, which is get you to understand something, um, entertain you, persuade, excuse me, get you to understand something, entertain you, get you to feel something, or make you do something. Okay? So that's the, that's the World Wide Web from a social perspective. It's all about communication and the reasons we communicate are what we do on the web as well. We looked at it also from a technological standpoint. Finally, let's look at it from an information standpoint. The World Wide Web from an information standpoint is really, to my mind, best and most simply understood as the web is the library. It's not a library. There's libraries all over the place. It's not a library. It's the library. It's the one. It's the big one. It's the place where all the world's information resides. So as opposed to uh, a, a physical library where not all the world's information resides, well, the web doesn't contain all the world's information, but relatively speaking, it sure does. Relative to any, any building that you might go into and any amount of print material, it is the library. And it's also the library in the sense of the way that we use it. We go to the web to find out. We go to the web to get information and we sort of expect more and more, we demand that any information we want is there, available to us over the web. Okay, so the web is the library. If the web is the library, then the books in the library are the websites. Each website is kind of like a book and we'll talk later about, you know, in more detail about websites, but that's a, not a bad way to start out understanding websites. They're like books. And the catalogs, where you might go into the library and search through a database catalog in order to find um, a book on the shelves. What are the catalogs? The search engines, right? So we're going to go into lots of detail about search engines later in the course. But now, for the moment, think about it in the big picture. The web is technological, it's sociological, and it's also informational. Informationally, it's like a library. It's like the big library. And going one step deeper, we can say that the World Wide Web represents our best guess, humanity's best collective guess, because it's not one person, right? It's everybody all the time simultaneously creating World Wide Web. Not one person, it's tons and tons and tons of people. And when they do that, they're creating together our best guess about how all the world's information is or maybe even should be organized. We're a lot closer to is than should be in the way that the World Wide Web is organized. It's very loosely organized right now, but it's more organized than when that information wasn't all in the same place. Now all our information is getting to be in the same place, and we can start to focus on how is it organized, how is it put together, how is it structured. Okay, web from a technological standpoint, browsers and servers. Web from a, a sociological standpoint, it's all about communication, and the reasons that we communicate are the same whether we're on the web or anywhere else. From an informational standpoint, it's this enormous library, and the structure of the World Wide Web is the structure of the world's knowledge at the moment. I hope we get a lot better in the future, but at the moment, that's our structure. Much better.